But yes, welcome to the Morning Sunsets podcast. I'm remembering to do an intro. And yes, Poss, how is everyone? How are you all? I'm chaotic. That's my answer. How about you, Trump? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Same old, same old with me, really. Bit tired. But, you know, plodding along. Oh. Oh, I guess. To start this off, I will ask my favourite question that threw Masters off last time. Who the hecky heck are you? And why are you here? Uh, I'm uh, Drum Forest Drum. Uh, I'm a variety streamer. who I just play games for funsies. And um, I'm here to talk to you about... Making me laugh. I'm, I'm, I'm here to talk to you about I love how I send mental you health. in advance as well yeah I'm here to talk to you about mental health but like from the perspective of someone who doesn't suffer from it but is in the world of it due to my relationships and things like that Mr. Drummington that'd be me yes as I know you are formally called when did you first learn about the world of mental health, seeing as you said, you have not personally experienced mental health issues. I can talk. So, I first... See, I've probably known about mental health for a long time, but I first got thrown into the world of it, it would have been six years ago now, when I got together with Sassy, my fiance. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, and so I didn't really know actually really about it properly until then. I'm nearly 30. I grew up in a family where mental health wasn't really a thing. My, my family's not suffered with it. Um, but also didn't grow up really with anyone who appeared to suffer with mental health. Because uh, And when you were a kid, you don't. You don't know these things. You don't realise these are things growing up. So, growing up wasn't really with anyone who appeared to suffer with it. The family didn't have it. And it was kind of a case of growing up, uh, for lack of a better term, you weren't allowed to have it. Uh, I, it sounds meaner than I want it to sound. I get that. But it, it, I, it was, doesn't. I, but like growing up, it was a case of if you were scared to do something, you know, if you wanted something or you wanted to ask someone something, you had to go and ask. If you were too scared, you, then it was a case of, wow, tough. You either do it or you don't get what you want kind of situation. Um, So I grew up very quickly knowing not to have those problems most people i know who were in that situation kind of came out the opposite so it's really interesting to hear that you actually like flourished in that environment because so many people i know who were like forced to kind of like get on with it went the opposite direction <laughs> and hopefully she doesn't mind saying me saying this but that's what happened with sass for after speaking with sass her parents tried to make her do the same thing from what i'm aware and that's exactly what happened it made things worse mm. um yeah and this 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 causes one of the first problems of being on the outside of it all and then suddenly being chucked into it because of the way i viewed things my initial thought to of when Sassy had issues or when anyone with mental health problems, say, is too scared to go and do something. Um, anxiety is just a good example because that's what I've uh, dealt with most with other people. Um, is my view is, well, the more you do something, the more used to it you'll get. So go do it kind of thing. yeah. If theoretically, because <laughs> and because it worked with me, that's how I grew up. I I my thought was just, well, that's how it's going to work. If you don't do it, you'll never get better, and tough tits on you. Yeah. And 
I had to very quickly learn that that was not how it worked. <laughs> and actually, that's quite a bad way of looking at it. And it doesn't help those with mental health issues to talk to them like that. Yeah, I was going to say, how how was that sort of, I guess, reaction of you kind of being like that to Sat and her reaction? <laughs> Because I know how I would react if someone said that to me. Uh, crying? There was a lot of crying. Yeah. Uh, there was crying from her end and there was frustration and anger from my end because I didn't understand. I still don't understand and I'm never going to admit that I do understand because yeah. I can't. I physically can't understand. It's, it's, it's never going to happen. And this brings me on to something which some people might disagree with. Oh, and safe space, some, safe space. Yeah, safe space. <laughs> but some people might think this is controversial. I don't know. I've never actually said this to anyone else to find out. But I... It is impossible for someone without mental health issues to empathize with someone who has them. Physically impossible. Can't be done. And anyone... And I generally believe anyone who tells you that they empathize with you when they don't suffer with the issues of mental health they're fucking lying <laughs> because it's just not possible so i can sympathize with you i can sympathize with someone who has mental health sort of problems because i can understand that you're upset frustrated scared but I can only understand that you're you're feeling that from my personal perspective. Yeah. So I can sympathize. And someone who doesn't have mental health problems can sympathize. But empathy is putting yourself in the other person's shoes and understanding uh, why someone is feeling those particular things. Mm -hmm. And so as someone who doesn't suffer from mental health, I cannot empathize. And no one who doesn't have those issues can empathize with you. And I think that is the biggest hurdle between the, the two sides. The two, two sides. I, I'm, <laughs> I, I don't have better terms. I'm really sorry. I'm not trying to separate. The Romeo you know, and the Juliet. You, you know what I mean? Like, that is the biggest hurdle. We get frustrated because we can't understand you, but we want to help or we just want it to be gone. And, you know, and you get upset, angry, frustrated because you, sometimes I think that actually people with mental health issues do want the other people without to empathize but we can't yeah and it creates this massive stumbling block yeah i mean i've definitely experienced that with sort of trying to explain my ocd panic to people and they just get frustrated because they kind of don't know whether i'm coming or going because one day i'll be okay with something and the next day i won't and yeah. because they don't have OCD, they can't understand how my brain sees it. No. And it is frustrating on both sides. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm desperately trying to explain myself. But by doing that, I'm kind of making it worse. Because then the other person's getting frustrated that they don't understand. So yeah. it is kind of a vicious cycle sometimes. Which can it is suck. like once again anxiety is a fantastic example um like someone with anxiety wants to do something but they're too frightened something as simple as they have to ring the doctor oh god to sort out their meds see instantly you're like <laughs> oh god no. i i don't want to do that sassy fucking hates it but i'm sat here thinking but there's nothing wrong here the doctors are lovely people. I mean, our doctors are fantastic. The people on the end of the phone are always so nice and helpful. They're fucking brilliant. And so I don't understand why it's such a big deal to just have to ring the doctor. Um, and it can get frustrating. And it can get annoying. 
Um, and if it wasn't for the last six years, I'd be a very different person with a very different outlook on it all. And I, I guess that's the thing, because it's not like you go up to someone and you go, Hey, I have mental health problems. These are my issues. Like, you don't do that so people don't, I, I guess, learn to adapt to how other people behave without having to understand them. Yeah. Like, I guess people struggle with just accepting that people do things differently some people see things differently because they're not aware that those people exist <laughs> yeah uh, one of the other problems is and i think a lot of people who don't suffer with mental health are probably quite similar we're fixers if there's yeah. a problem we want to fucking fix it we want to do whatever we can to sort that issue out and actually, nine times out of ten, that makes things worse. Because the other person doesn't want things fixed. They just want to vent. They just want to cry. And they just want to put it behind them. But we we want to fix it. We want to we want to make things better. But actually, it ends up making things worse. And I am terrible for that all the fucking time. I'm awful. Absolutely awful. Yeah, my, my mum can be a bit like that sometimes. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm bloody awful for it. Uh, this I always whenever I go to my mum with a problem straight away she's like oh we can do this we can do that we can fix it here and I'm like no I just kind of wanted to cry yeah sorry and, and that's that's <laughs> literally what I do and it just makes things worse uh, yeah. sorry Poss, Poss is saying some stuff I just want... uh Poss for me like I'm confident talking to people my own age normally but as soon as I talk to an adult specifically an adult authoritative figure I turn into an overly polite, shy, stammering mess. I get that. I was actually the opposite when I was younger. I would be absolutely fine around adults. As soon as I was around people my own age, I was like, oh my god, they hate me. Oh my god, they hate me. <laughs> I used to be shy as a kid with people I didn't know. But as soon as I got to know people, it was like, oh yeah, it's fine. I guess I never had that opportunity being like in and out of hospital and stuff so i never actually got the chance to get to know people i was just like they hate me and then i didn't see them for two months <laughs> fair enough <laughs> <laughs> uh, i was gonna say like back on your thing of like not being able to speak to people you you can't just go up to people and tell them your issues hmm. they should make a dating app for people with mental health disabilities well, and then it's just all there. I'm I'm not gonna lie. When I matched with Sag on Hinge, within about three minutes, our conversation was comparing our family trauma. It was amazing. Like I was like, he's the one. Like this this is everything. He was like, yeah, my dad's dead, and I was like, oh wow, yeah, my dad nearly died. And what then the we, fuck, you two? I know, it was amazing. <laughs> what the fuck? I know. So, yeah, I fully agree there should be a dating app for people with issues. Because then it's just like, you don't have to tell people. You all know why you're there. Yeah. You know, there's nothing hidden. Yeah. And then if it works so well for you and Zag, maybe that's what you need. You just need it out there straight away so that then you can just compare... And see if you work. Yeah. yeah. I I did do the awkward thing of the first time I met his mum. I was like, oh yeah, by the way, the, our first conversation was about how messed up our families are. And I was like, did I just say that to his mum? I did. Okay. Yes. Smooth, um, it's so smooth. Yeah. Just so she smooth. found it funny, so it's fine. <laughs> There's a website where people find mates for their cattle. It's like cow tinder. It's awesome. Why is I mean, it awesome? That's why, my question. Yeah, why do you find that awesome, Poss? That's an interesting one. I mean, if you're a farmer, I imagine that's pretty awesome. Why do you find it awesome, though, Poss? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know you work with animals, but... Are you a secret farmer? Yeah. <laughs> Are you breeding like a cow army, Poss? Anyway, enough about cows. 
I was then going to make a really bad joke about my mum, and then I realised she's watching. I'm not going to do that one. Just move on. Just move on, Lama. Just, just move on. Just yeah. keep it rolling. Just keep it rolling. Speaking of parents, eh? I made it into a segue. You say that your parents never really had mental health issues. Have you spoken with them about mental health sort of now that your fiance has mental health issues? I have. I have spoken to them about it. And I'll give them their due. They have been pretty accommodating for sass like they do try a lot because they do really like sass and they do try they are trying to understand so i think it's a bit more on their radar now which is good there is a bit more of an awareness so we the people who don't have mental health issues don't get it and for those who are not have ha, have not tried to learn and understand as best we can we don't listen all that goes through our heads is well that's a you problem <laughs> I, it sounds horrible and no, but this is I, it's, it's this true. is the thing that is what goes through the heads of those who don't try and make a conceited effort to understand the best we can it's a you problem and as i said it sounds so horrible to say it and i fucking hate saying it and i hate admitting that that's how i used to think but sadly it just is a really like ridiculous example really extreme example say someone comes up to me and is like I'm okay, I've been to the hospital, but I got stabbed in the leg. I'll be like, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> Doesn't really affect me though, does it? It's more of a you issue. You've just said you've been to the hospital. You're fine, you're still alive. You're not dying. That's a you problem. It's yeah. like, I, I, I get the laughter because it's a silly example. It really is, but... I mean, as a super overly emotional, empathetic person, I find that hilarious because I would be on the phone like, oh my God, are you okay? Do you need me to come there? Oh my God, are you okay? No, see, I'm just like, yeah, I am I would sympathize. I would sympathize mm -hmm. and be like, I'm really sorry that happened to you, man. Move on. <laughs> Get on with it. You ain't dead. Can you walk? Great. You have, you have another leg. You got another leg? Fucking move on, mate. That's a you problem. Uh, yeah. No, I, I get that. And I know a few people who sort of see things like that. And I think it just depends on your experiences growing up and whether, I guess, your emotions were nurtured in a sort of empathising with people kind of situation. Yeah. Like, my dad has mental health problems, so I grew up being aware of mental health problems. So I've always kind of been empathetic and sympathetic to other people's needs and what they can and can't do. Whereas I'm the opposite. I grew up, yeah. no one had mental health problems. I knew no one with mental health problems, and even sympathy was not given growing up. Unless you broke your arm. We didn't get sympathy. My dad is not a sympathetic guy. Like, my, <laughs> my, so my family are heavily religious. Massive Christian family. My brother's a fucking minister. Nice. Um, and I used to be religious too. I used to be heavy on the Christian side. And I, I left it all behind. But even then, my dad is not a sympathetic guy. In the slightest. Like, not at all. Sympathy is not his thing. And so it was never a thing in my family when growing up. We didn't get sympathy. It was uh, if it was always that thing. If you fall down, it was like, all right, then get up. Are you it's bleeding? It's so no, interesting to me. Because it's like, obviously, I grew up with a physical disability as well as mental health issues. So it's like the opposite world to what I grew up with. Um, And it's very interesting to see 
how that actually plays into how you think as you're an adult. Yeah. Like, Empathy is one of the toughest things to get your head around because there are people in this world who have empathy disorders. But they have empathy disorders on both ends of the spectrum. So you yeah. have people who have zero empathy, sociopaths. But you have zero you have people who have pure empathy. And people at that end of the spectrum can't help but constantly put themselves in someone else's shoes <laughs> and know exactly how you're just feeling at all fucking times. Like... I'm definitely a lot closer to that end. Like, I cried when I was a kid if, like, I don't know, say my dad really wanted to get something from the shop and they were sold out, I would cry. Because it would, like, break my heart as, like, a seven-year-old. Like, it really didn't matter. But as a seven-year-old, I was like, oh my god, this is so sad. Because I was imagining yeah. how I would feel. <laughs> no, see, never... I cried a lot as a child. Uh, once again, though, I was brought up in the family of, hey, I'll give you something to cry about. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> I think a lot of people were to be fair a lot of people who were raised as male were given that kind of upbringing and even now to a certain extent here's here's the thing i have an issue with and that i still can't make my full decision on i don't agree with hitting children just for the record i don't agree with it and i will never hit my children when i eventually have them but it worked. I'm fine. I know it doesn't work for everyone, but it. I, I. I'm not a bad person. I grew up to be a decent human being, and I grew up respecting people, including my parents, and I still love my parents. Yeah. Um... And this is why I find it difficult. I, I get that. Um, whereas for me personally, I was only ever smacked once. And I still remember it to this day. Like, I was five. I can still see it. It affected me that much. Like, it was a really massive deal. And even now, I still bring it up to my mum. Like, hey, remember that one time? <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, see, if I said, hey, remember that one time when you smacked me, my parents would turn to me and be like, which fucking time? <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, I was being a bit of a butt up, but, you know. Well, that was the thing. We we, <laughs> we didn't get grounded. We got a slap. Neither did I. If we I were being a little, grounded. Yeah, if we were being a little fuck, because that was the only time we got a slap was if we were in trouble. We didn't just get slapped around. If we were in trouble, we got a slap we were being naughty we got a slap no see all my parents had to do was like say they were disappointed in me and i would burst out crying i didn't need any proper punishment i was just like i'm so sorry i'm sorry <laughs> like i mean every kid is different and every, every kid family is different. is different um but i i personally think there's a lot more people who are fucked up from being hit than there are that turned out all right. If that makes sense. Like, I would say you're probably in the minority of people. I'm possibly in the minority of people. I, I'm not going to say probably. I'm going to say possibly. I can't. I don't okay, have the Mr. Figures. Accountant. I don't have the figures. <laughs> I can't know. <laughs> Um, we went massively off topic there though sorry the thing is as well if you you've got the experience you can help the next generation i fucking can everyone can to a certain extent i can't help if my child comes out with mental health issues i'm gonna struggle because i don't understand no, but you can still support them. 
I can support. If you don't understand. But most of my thing will once again be what I try and do when I'm with Sass. I'll just try and fix things. Even though I know it doesn't work, that's all I will end up trying to do because that's all I know how to do. Mm. And that's one of the problems. People without mental health issues who don't understand it, we revert to what we know how to do. Yeah. And... Um... In some ways, that can help because it shows that you care, and it's always nice to know that people care. It's just, I guess, finding the right balance between you and whoever the person is that has the mental health issues. So mm. it's, it's once again this: I just don't get it, and sadly, I won't ever get it. Mm. And that is a good point, Simple. Drum is a very grounded person, which is great for people that do suffer with mental health problems because it's like a a tree that isn't going anywhere, that isn't going to change and is just going to be there when you need shade from the sun that is terrifying anxiety. There we go. That was a nice picture for you. <laughs> I will always be around for my friends. You piss me off and you can fuck off. If you if you if you show me that you're not my mate, you will just be cut out. I will just ignore you. You will just go. And I won't bother. I won't I probably wouldn't even give you an explanation. You'll know who your real friends are. I know who my real friends are. They're these guys, they're you guys, and they're the people who I still talk to from fucking primary school. My stag do was eight of us, my dad was one of them, me was one of them, and six of my best friends in this entire world, who I have known since primary and secondary school. Jack Little was there. Jack's Game Fest. I've known him since we were six years old. <laughs> that is amazing. Like, as I was saying to you yesterday, like, I don't really have friends from that long ago because, as with Poss, my past friends probably weren't the best. And when I say probably, I'm just trying not to offend them because for some reason I still care about that. <laughs> but no, like that's why I got this tattoo that I cannot show off because that is the app where I met the first people that were genuinely friends and actually gave a crap about me <laughs> and i was like i want that on my body forever <laughs> that's awesome so now they can't leave me <laughs> i've trapped them and yes plus i was also the extra friend i i was always the extra friend i would like just kind of follow people around so that i was then adopted into the group <laughs> yeah doesn't work very well but you know i was always in the cool group because i wouldn't settle for anything less that was probably my issue <laughs> <laughs> trying to be cool and i really wasn't it's crap but you do belong here and there are people that love you we're some of those people. <laughs> Lama, Actually, don't start crying. Oh no, don't worry. I'm dead inside at the moment. <laughs> uh, I mean that in a healthy way. There's no healthy way to take that. Sort your shit out, woman. What are you doing? No, I mean, it's not healthy. I, I do have emotions. I just... Better to feel something than nothing at all. Every time. I agree with you 99% of the time. But I get stuck in negative thought spirals that are incredibly overwhelming. And sometimes it's nice to not feel things. When you get stuck in those negative thought spirals, what do you do? Disassociate and cry. <laughs> Why do you do you ever message anyone? Uh, sometimes. It depends on if I'm aware 
that it's happening as it's happening, if that no, makes sense. I, yeah, no, it makes sense. Because <laughs> sometimes I don't realise till I've already zoned out. You should I've... always, as soon as you realise, message someone. Anyone. Yeah, I, I do try. And again, Yush, I, I feel more at home with internet people too. Like, I love having people in my pocket on my phone. That they're always there at a moment's notice it's quite nice um i definitely got better at sort of talking about when i'm in a bad place since being the zag because he's also got a lot of mental health issues <laughs> so it's kind of like trading off <laughs> this this is one of the things i've 100 percent noticed about mental health and that I have learned is that you cannot deal with it alone. Mm. Even though you suffer with it alone, you can't deal with it alone ever because it doesn't work. So even if all you've got to talk to is somebody like me who cannot empathize, still talk to them. No, that is very very true you've got more questions i was just about to say we've gone on a massive tangent here i know i don't mind tangents tangents are good also mathematical i don't know why but because i know that you're an accountant i'm like oh they math things <laughs> it's like a weird association in my brain <laughs> yeah i don't anyway. know either it's interesting that everyone thinks that because you're an accountant, maths is what you deal with most. And we deal with a lot of maths, but actually nowadays the computer does a lot of it. So actually we're more money people. We deal with money. Like we look at people's spending and receiving of monies. <laughs> and, and, you know, we move numbers around and, and shit like that. And we tell you what you've spent it on. That's kind of what we do. Fair enough. Well, seeing as we're talking about your work, do you experience any stress or anxiety working with money, not maths? <laughs> um, I get stress only in the same way that people who get busy at work get stressed. But that's about it, really. But that doesn't happen often. Um, but no, I don't really suffer with stress or anxiety. Oh, that is... That is very impressive. <laughs> I get nervous when I start a new job, but that's about it. Other than that, I'm all good. Wow. I am very, very jealous of that. That is amazing. <laughs> I'm just in awe right now. <laughs> it took practice. What? What do you mean by that? Care to elaborate? I used to get like stressed about work or anxiety about work well not anxiety but like worried about bits and bobs here and there but as i got older i just found why bother so i just stopped i it sounds silly but i just stopped like if something would like start stressing me out i'd be like oh, actually i don't care it's not my problem what 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 is stressing about it gonna do for me do you know what i mean like it doesn't help a situation so i've just kind of come i came to this conclusion that actually i'm just not gonna bother getting stressed or anxious about work it's not it's not worth my time if i just you... get on with it it's fine but other than that pff, like i'm doing a job at the moment that literally got handed to me two days ago and it needs to be finished by the end of the month because it slipped through the cracks um you are literally a therapist's dream like well, the amount of times therapists have told me to like just let it go because stressing doesn't um help you do anything and it's not productive and i'm like i can't do that susan it's not that simple it is amazing to hear that, I don't know, that people can just exist. 
Like, it sounds like magic. Like... <laughs> Yeah, as you said, I, I admire you. Like, that is amazing. I I aspire to be able to do that. And hopefully, one day, I might get slightly closer. I will never get rid of my OCD and anxiety and paranoia, but I am slowly kind of finding ways to not constantly freak out. <laughs> you, I think you need to try and find stuff that you can pick up like right there and then that can take your mind off of something mm. you know so as soon as you start stressing about something you've got something there silly example again like a fucking rubik's cube that you could pick up and just set your mind to like I feel like that's one of the best ways to stop stressing because it, it teaches your mind to realize, actually, stressing ain't helpful. I could, this Rubik cube is probably more helpful. <laughs> yeah. Or this is doing this is probably more helpful. Like, and once again, it's easier said than done for, for someone without mental health issues like i can say it until i'm fucking blue in the face and farting rainbows but it it's not as easy as it sounds it's not as easy yeah. as it's said and i get that but i mean that's how i ended up sort of becoming obsessed with christmas and buying gifts because whenever i would feel stressed or sad or alone or anxious or any of my negative thoughts i would be like right let's plan what we're getting for so and so what we're doing for this that and i would completely forget what i was worried about because i was being productive yeah. there you go so dot your room around with just some shit you find remotely interesting that you can set your mind to yeah just stop stressing, guys. It's super easy. Just, just stop you, stressing. You hear that, you. everyone? Just, stop. just as easy as that. Just stop stressing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I totally get people struggle. I really do. And, and I'm, and I'm, I know I joke, but I, I, I know you all struggle. I, I understand you all struggle, and I understand it's can be really problematic at times. And I do sympathise with you. And all I can really say is, I really hope that you do find ways to cope and that you do find people who if you're struggling you can fucking talk to because that's mm -hmm. the important thing is if you get yourself stuck in a spiral fucking text someone because they can just drag you out of that and take your mind off it that is very true fucking text llama she'll talk to you <laughs> yeah you can you can try texting me but i won't get what you're talking about so <laughs> <laughs> uh, now but... one thing I do find and one thing I've noticed and Lama, do you find that when you get past a, a hurdle of any size like you manage to ring your doctor, say do you feel good after you've done it? Like, do you feel like you've accomplished something? Sometimes Why only sometimes? Because I know it was just once and I'm next time I'm going to feel the exact same. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Any, I, I, I generally believe this helps. Like, because I've seen it help, Sass. And I try and, like, uh, I think this does help is take any little victory and enjoy it. If you yeah. manage to make a phone call, if you manage to answer the door, if you manage to pay for something at a shop, feel good that you've managed to do that. Don't don't think, oh, it'll just happen again next time. Enjoy that you've managed to succeed at that. And then yeah. try and hold on to that feeling so that next time, even if it's just a small chance, maybe you'll remember what that felt like and it helps you push through again. 
take yeah. those small wins. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And, boss, I, I agree. You do kind of end up bullying yourself over it. Which is the problem. Because it is like, oh, I should have done that ages ago. Why did it take me that long? So you end up not celebrating it. Because you're like, oh, finally I did it. Which isn't very helpful. <laughs> Janos, texting someone does not make you a bother. If you are a bother to someone you are texting when you need help, you don't want that person in your life. Yeah. See, I still feel like a burden. Like, to, to Zag all the time, I'll be like, oh, sorry, I've seen you twice this week. And he's like, yeah, you're my girlfriend. That's normal. But inside, I'm like, I've taken two whole days of your week. I am so sorry. <laughs> if this is how I've kept my friends along so for for so long, because they're not a bother. <laughs> <laughs> it's why I don't cut them out because they're not a bother, and this is why they've uh, not cut me out because I'm not a bother. If in in your worst times, if you feel you are. If, if people tell you you are a bother or if you feel like you're bothering people and they give off that reaction that you're bothering them, they're not your friend. Yeah. Because I have a lot of, um, I guess, anxiety around being a burden because growing up, health professionals always made me feel like a burden for needing help because they would always tell me to give my mum a break when I was like seven. Which, you know, really not a great thing to tell a child. Because then you just grow up thinking that you're just a pain to everyone around you. So I do still end up feeling like that sometimes. So I completely get that, Yush. Like, it is a hard one to get over. But you just kind of have to remember that you are important. Even if you don't feel it, you are you matter you are valid you are allowed to have feelings and thoughts and wants and desires and people should respect that and if they don't and they do make you feel crap for asking for help to be honest they probably have a lot of issues themselves <laughs> and you don't need that negativity uh... and yeah pos i agree the, the feeling of you would be alone without them. And I think what I wish I could have told myself at school is these are just people that keep you company while you're at school. Like at work, you have colleagues that you just put up with because otherwise you'd be sat in silence for like eight hours. It's the same at school and college. You don't have to really like them. They're just there to help you pass the time. <laughs> and that's okay. At the end of the day, you don't have to have friends at school or college. As long as you have social interaction of some kind, whether it be from online friends, neighbours, whatever. Like, you don't have to have the American high school experience where you all sing and dance and it's all amazing. Yeah, I wish that did happen sometimes, though. They looked like fun. Yeah, they did. High School Musical was fun. I have to admit, when I was in America for a bit, I did throw a house party and made everyone play Spin the Bottle so that I could live out my American high school fantasy. As you do. <laughs> yeah. As you fucking do. Why not? Anyway. Right. I think what I'm going to say is I'm going to give everyone homework. I have decided. I don't have everyone to do, here. Do yes, you do. What the fuck, man? <laughs> everyone here right now has to do this. In this next month, you have to do one thing just for yourself. Whether oh. you feel like you should or not, you have to do it. Just one thing. Whether that be talk to someone, 
take a day to yourself buy a coffee just something uh, i've finished already then i've done loads it's fine. <laughs> No, Miss Melody, why? <laughs> like, no, prime, you are not failing this. Prime example, I wasn't really running behind today. I was just watching something and I wanted to finish my episode before coming on. It's fine. I tell people I'm stuck in traffic all the time. I'm just in bed. I haven't left yet. I mean, <laughs> is it is it technically traffic for you? You are on wheels. Anything Free? in your way is traffic. <laughs> Yeah, that my dog was in front of me, you know, I it's couldn't traffic. move. It's traffic. It's <laughs> traffic. Uh, <laughs> I'm so using that. It's traffic. <laughs> I'm so using that. Anyway, yes, I will be checking up on you. Next, next podcast, I will be asking you if you have all done your homework. You took a day for yourself yesterday? Does that count? No. Because that was before the homework was given. You need to do it again. Anyway, thank you all very much for listening and watching and participating and talking. I will see you all next time. See you all later. Take care. Bye. I won't bring those whoopee cushions to your wedding then. Please, whoopee cushions. <laughs> that would be fucking hilarious. <laughs> Please. Oh, Llama, I fucking might do that. Oh my god, I'm going to talk to Sass and see if we can buy whoopee cushions to put on everyone's seats for when they come and sit down. I'll have to bring my own and stick it under my bum. Oh, <laughs> mate. No, I'll get everyone to like stand up. When I'm fucking toasting after a oh speech, and then God, I'll be yes. like, you will find a blown up whoopee cushion under the table, put it under yourself, and everyone sit down at the same time and just get this massive whoopee cushion off the go. That, that would, would be, be amazing. amazing. I love that. Oh, I'll be perfect.